Christian Bryant, look, we may not be gold medalists, but hopefully once we get to the end of the show, we'll at least be crowd favorites. Here's what we got in tonight's show, folks. You probably know Sunday is a big TV watching day, right? We've got the eagerly anticipated matchup in the Puppy Bowl. Yes, the Puppy Bowl. I'm thinking Watson the Basset Hound is gonna be MVP this year. Then there's also the other sporting event, the Super Bowl, where roughly 100 million Americans are expected to tune in. A fair number of those folks might be watching for the actual game. Those of you who enjoy a football game decided in the trenches will enjoy watching Aaron Donald and the Los Angeles Rams defense match up with the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line and quarterback Joe Burrow. There's a lot of excitement on the ground about the game set to be held in Los Angeles. Newsy's Clayton Sandell is there for us and has an update. Clayton, give us some sense of just how much prep and excitement is going into the spectacle of Sunday's game. Hey there, Christian. We are here at the NFL Experience at the LA Convention Center. SoFi Stadium is actually about 20 minutes down the freeway here, but this is the place where fans are going to be coming all weekend. It's gonna be jam packed in here. Uh, you can work on your football skills. I am not going to do that because I would embarrass myself, but this is where you can do all sorts of cool stuff. It's kind of like Comic-Con for football nerds. And again, this will be filled the entire weekend. It's only about 40 bucks, which is a lot cheaper than a Super Bowl ticket. And there is so much excitement here in Los Angeles because this is where the very first Super Bowl happened in 1967. And it's been almost 30 years since the Super Bowl was here back in 1993. The other big thing that people are really pumped about today is the halftime show. Guess who's back? Today we went to a press conference with Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and Mary J. Blige. Uh, Eminem and Kendrick Lamar are also going to be performing at the halftime show. And for the first time, this show is going to focus on hip hop music and culture. And of course, this comes at a time when the NFL is facing discrimination lawsuits and accusations that it is run by owners and executives that are far too white for a league where more than 70% of the players are black. Dr. Dre said this is a huge moment for what he called the biggest music genre in the world. It's crazy that it took all of this and all of this time for us to be recognized, you know? So I think we're gonna go on and do a fantastic show and we're gonna do it so big that they can't deny us anymore in the future. And Christian, the other thing that the teams are going to be dealing with this weekend is soaring Southern California temperatures. This could end up being one of the hottest, if not the hottest, Super Bowl on record. And I don't know what you're doing this weekend, but I was checking around online this morning and there were still a handful of tickets available, only about $4,000 a piece. Now, we might get flagged on our expense reports, but could be totally worth it. All right, Christian, I am now going to toss it back to you. Rams, Bengals, I'm still available. Still time to sign me. All right, many thanks, Clayton. We put out a shout on social media asking you if you plan on watching and why. Some of you are passing and have other things to do. Some folks were excited for the commercials, obviously. And some of you are ready for Dr. Dre and Friends at the halftime show while others would watch just about any football matchup they could get. And new data tells us that split is a broader trend, but that a few more people might actually be paying more attention to the commercials than the game. A new Hipsos poll conducted for Newsy finds that more than a third of respondents, 36%, say they are more excited to watch the commercials than the game itself. That's compared to 31% who are more pumped to watch the game itself and 26% who could go either way. And with those much anticipated commercials comes the chance to see some iconic ads. We shall prevail. I'll be honest, I still say was just like that, and not as a joke. For decades now, Super Bowls have been prime advertising real estate with 30 seconds of ad time for this year's game going for as much as $7 million. But not every company sees the value in paying so much 
to showcase new ads, even companies with a history of advertising in the big game. Coca-Cola is sitting on the sidelines for the second year in a row, while rival Pepsi is sponsoring the halftime show. State Farm also opted out after airing its first Super Bowl ad last year. This year, it's putting its money toward a Super Bowl ad campaign for TikTok, not TV. That opportunity to seize on the online buzz around the Super Bowl even leads to some of the game day ads dropping days before the actual game. Some companies do like a tease, uh, teaser, like a movie trailer of the ads um, for those Super Bowl spots. Um, and it definitely, I think um, those are the tactics that companies use to um, keep keep the viewers engaged. That's Lindley Shu, a marketing professor at the University of Minnesota, who has done research into how effective Super Bowl advertising is at generating word of mouth buzz for companies. So why do companies do this? Super Bowl ads, when done right, can be more iconic than the game itself. Think about it. Your company gets to market to 100 million people you have a video that can go viral even before the game, and TV shows and websites will run your ads afterward because of the buzz they generate. And you have a chance to define your brand. A lot of people watch the game for the commercials, and so it's a very high interest uh, moment in television, so that if you're an advertiser, not only are you gonna get 100 million eyeballs, but you're gonna get them paying attention to your ad, and that's just unheard of in, in this day and age. Steve McKee is the co-founder of the advertising agency McKee Wallwork, and he's also the creator of AdBolt, an early online tracker of how viewers respond to Super Bowl ads that let viewers rate their favorites for nearly 20 years. And based on the feedback he saw in his years running AdBolt, he offered an interesting comparison to explain what makes a good Super Bowl ad. Well, the key to advertising in the Super Bowl is recognizing the context. And the context is it's the it's America's biggest party. That's what it is. And so you wanna behave in your advertising like you would behave at a party. It's okay to make jokes if you wanna do that. It's okay to be loud if you wanna do that and be flamboyant. Um, it's okay to do a lot of things. It's not okay to be a downer. <laughs> Nobody wants a party pooper. It's also important as ever now with advertisers working to make sure they read the room properly in light of the recent surge of the Omicron variant of COVID-19. Some advertisers are even shooting alternate endings for their commercials to be ready to respond to fast moving events. And ads are even a huge opportunity for companies in trouble to reestablish themselves. Chrysler did this with ads in the early 2010s after it emerged from bankruptcy and the auto industry bailouts. The thing is, it's a big gamble for companies since the massive investment doesn't guarantee any long-term buzz. It only lasts like a, a, a few days, and then it revert back to the kind of the baseline before um, before the Super Bowl. So basically, I think even for the biggest sport event, Super Bowl, where people do see there are a lot of buzz and uh, and conversations uh, generated by those commercials, Super Bowl commercials, but that impact is actually quite short-lived. It's really about what you do afterward with that buzz. So it doesn't always mean success. Back in 2000, the game was dubbed the dot-com Super Bowl after 20% of the ads went to dot-com companies. That exposure didn't save a lot of those companies from some other bad financial decision-making in the industry. After the dot-com bubble burst later that year, every company that advertised saw their value drop with only three coming back to advertise the following year. Along comes the internet in the mid to late 1990s and the dot-com boom where all these uh, new dot-com companies were getting huge amounts of venture capital investment. And so several of these companies thought, well, what better thing to do with all the money we have than to run a Super Bowl commercial? And for some, it worked out pretty well. And for some, they became sort of a joke and a byword because they were running commercials where you didn't even know what they were about. We're seeing another new industry make its first big step towards Super Bowl ads in 2022. Cryptocurrency businesses and marketplaces have been on the upswing in the past year, although the recent large drops in cryptocurrency values have put a dent in those gains. But large exchanges, including FTX and Crypto.com, have poured millions into ads that you'll see this Sunday. We don't know yet if crypto companies will head the way of Apple or the dot-com busts, but it's part of a broader trend where cryptocurrency businesses are investing heavily in marketing tied to sports and professional athletes. And no matter how effective their ads are on Super Bowl Sunday, it's something we can expect to see a lot more of when tuning in for big games in the future. Newsy's Tyler Adkisson has more. 
This Super Bowl, cryptocurrency exchanges like Coinbase, FTX, and Crypto.com are shelling out top dollar to run their first high-profile TV ads to an audience of upwards to 110 million viewers. For these exchanges, platforms where users can buy and sell crypto, the ads serve as a high-risk, high-reward way to generate awareness and engagement. The ads do not come cheap. Ad rates for this Super Bowl go for as much as $7 million for 30 seconds of airtime. You know, with the crypto platforms, what they need is more, more participants, right? Basically, everybody who signs up and uses their platform is going to be generating revenue for these companies. So it's really about trying to broaden that reach. You're, you're talking about companies that are relatively unknown when you compare them to the Pepsis and Banks of America of the world. Um, so scale is obviously a big one. Sports is able to deliver a significant amount of scale in a very short amount of time, um, you know, through a relevant lens. $7 million for a 30 second ad is a lot, but these three crypto exchanges have spent even more exorbitant sums of cash to get into the sports world. Last year, Crypto.com spent $700 million on the naming rights for the former Staples Center where the Los Angeles Lakers play. It also has a $30 million sponsorship deal with Paris Saint-Germain, a $10 million deal with the Philadelphia 76ers, and deals worth more than $100 million with Formula One and UFC. FTX spent $135 million to get their name on the Miami Heats arena and reached a deal with the MLB to put an FTX patch on every umpire uniform. It also paid Tom Brady $20 million to star in an ad campaign. Coinbase inked a deal with the NBA to feature their logo during nationally televised games. Crypto right now as a category is outspending airlines, it's outspending quick serve restaurants, and it's outspending um, hotels. They're pretty close to being a top 10 spender in all of North America and probably globally, um, literally within the last six to eight months. And that is, you know, to, for an airline to, to build a portfolio of sponsorship that ranks in the top 15 spends takes years. The biggest question that remains is if these high-risk investments will pay off in the long run. Crypto's move into the Super Bowl mirrors that of the dot-com boom of Super Bowl 2000, when about a dozen web startups paid for ads, with many failing shortly thereafter. In terms of whether or not it's a bubble, um, I think it does have the markings of that. But what isn't a bubble? Like, everything's a bubble. It's just a question of how big the bubble is and when it pops, or if it pops. Tyler Adkisson, Newsy, Chicago.